Now let's tackle the airline specific questions that will definitely be asked of you. These are the questions that are only asked within the airline industry and how you answer them determines greatly whether you pass or fail on your interview. Also to prepare for your interview, make sure that you research on the following topics. The airline's tagline, who is the airline's CEO, their destinations and fleet size, what is the history of the airline, where are their hubs, how long has been the airline in operation? Who are their competitors? And what do they stand for? What does the airline's brand represent? What do you like about this airline? Some of the questions are, why are you applying for our airline? The main reason that the panel is asking you about this is because they want to know if you have thoroughly researched the specific airline company or are you just applying for every airline company that is opening right now? Key areas to focus on are the quality of the product of the airline, the airline's achievements and ambitions, and what they stand for. If you know about their motto or their tagline, it is also best to tell them about this during this answer. Another question that they may ask you is, why do you want to be a cabin crew? Make sure that you focus on your ambition, focus on the suitability of your personality, skills, and attributes to the job. Focus on the positive aspects of the job and working on the work service industry and working on the service industry. Airline related question that may ask you is, what are the challenges that you see our airline will face in the future and how you, as the cabin crew, can help us overcome it? To answer this question, you have to have a good knowledge of the airline industry. So this is all that you need to know. The airline industry is very competitive. It used to be mostly focused on the glamorous side of flying, but right now it has become commercial and it has become more common it's now focused on service and it's now focused on safety in light with what happened to the previous hijackers or attacks of terrorists. So airline, the airline industry is now all about safety, quality, and convenient flights. It faces a lot of challenges when it comes to cost of operations and security issues. They are expected to deliver a very high standard of service to the passengers. This question is also designed to assess your knowledge about the flight attendant role. So again, focus your answer on your awareness on the airline industry issues like competition, security, and high operating costs and at the same time balancing the customer's idea of the service that they are getting from the airline company and focus on the flight attendant role as being the face of the airline, the firing squad, the first line on the war, um, giving the customer the best attitude, the best smiles, the best service that will help the airline win a lot more loyal customers. There you have it guys, the airline specific questions. On the next module, we will talk about the surprise type of questions. Hi, on this lesson, let's talk about the surprise type of questions. What am I talking about? So here in the Philippines, there are so many people applying for the flight attendant position. Most probably the recruiters are already tired of answer, asking the same questions over and over again and hearing rehearsed uh, well-polished answers from you so sometimes they do a throwaway question or something that will just throw you off your game something like why should we not hire you these crazy questions that you have never prepared for and have no idea of answering them so don't worry these questions are actually just created or thrown at you to see how well can you think on your feet that means how quick can you respond to an unexpected event. So always carry yourself with poise and smile and think quickly how you could give them an answer. Don't worry if your answer is not perfect or not your rehearsed or practiced answer. 
However, make sure that it is relevant and somehow related. Try to be cheerful and thoughtful of your answer. You could say that, honestly, that question is a surprise for me. Let me think about it. To answer your question, this is what I think. So those, quest those answers that you have already prepared for, try to recycle them and try to insert them into this question. At the end of the day, they will, they will assess how you react to an unexpected event. And that's the most important thing. So there you have it guys, the different types of questions that you might encounter on your flight attendant interview. On the next module, we'll talk about the group interview tips that I have for you. Hello and welcome to module 6. On the previous module, we talked about the basic interview questions, the airline research checklist, and the airline specific questions that you have to prepare to for your interview. On this module, we will talk about group dynamics and the final interview stages, as well as English and math exams that you may have to encounter when you're applying for the job. Let's get started. The first topic that we're going to talk about is the group dynamics. Why do the airline companies require you to attend a group dynamic activity or a group interview activity? This is because they would like to know all about your teamwork and interpersonal skills. It is also time-saving and cost-effective on their part to interview all of you all at the same time. They will also have a real-time environment or have a feel of how you would be if you are in a certain situation. And also, lastly but not the least, they will have a chance to compare you to all other candidates who are vying for the same position. What are the classic group interview tasks? This is what usually they will ask you to do. Either one, they will ask you to speak in front of the group about a certain question that all of you have to answer. So everybody gets the same question and then everybody have to answer and try to give an answer that is not the same as everyone else. The second thing that they would ask you to do maybe is to prepare an itinerary for a guest. So they will usually group you into a group of 12 and then you will have a scenario wherein you will have a guest coming into your country and then you have to prepare where would you like to bring that guest and why and what time are you gonna do it and why is it the best place to do it and things like that. The next thing that they might ask you to do is they might give you a set of Legos or a set of sticks and they will ask you to work as a team. To create something for your group and why it represents your group and why you chose to create that thing and last but not least they may pair you up into twos wherein each other one will have to uh, introduce the other partner into the group <laughs> okay so what are my general tips for the group dynamics interview you need to follow the instructions exclusively. If they tell you don't speak English, never speak a word that is not English at all. If they tell you don't look at them, don't look at the recruiters while you are doing the activity, never ever look at them. I have been in this situation before and I am not proud to say that I have failed so many times in this interview because I just can't help but look at the interviewer. So every time that they catch me looking at them, I'm automatically out or out for the next round. Try to not too, talk too much and also not talk too little. Be, uh, be a part of the group, give your, uh, give your examples or give your contributions as well as include others. Create an icebreaker for yourself. It's an icebreaker introduction wherein you would tell the recruiter like for example, hello and welcome to Cebu City or something like that. Uh, this icebreaker will help you stand out and make you more memorable in if you are in a group setting. Decorum. Always maintain a proper posture and friendly body language. Be inclusive. Encourage others to speak out and thank others for their contributions. 
I would also like to emphasize some inclusion phrases that you could practice during the interview. You could use lines such as, That's a good idea. That's a great idea, Jane. Or, Nice point, Anna. And also, you could use phrases that include others by asking them of their opinion like, What do you think, Rosie? So after the group activity, the interviewer might ask you a couple of things. First one is, how did you contribute to the group? So the best thing to do this is to focus on your strengths and qualities that you have brought into the table or into the activity for the group. Things like planning and organization skills, ability to solve problems, and give the example. Another question that they may ask you is, how did the team complete the, the activity or the task? So focus your answer on your team using your resources, overcoming obstacles together as a team, and trying to reach the same objective through proper communication and encouragement of each other. Also, important note to acknowledge the contribution of each and every one of the team member to get your ultimate result. Now let's talk about the things to avoid on your group interview. Taking too much of the spotlight. So in a group interview, you might feel very competitive. You might have the urge to try to outshine the others. But um, let me tell you that that's not the way to win or that's not really the objective of the group interview. The objective of, of the group interview is not to have someone shine above the others, but to find someone who can work with others towards the same goal. So in Tagalog, this is called the people who are pabibo or too much of a KSP. Participating with the right amount of attitude, not too much and not too little, is the best way to go. Second mistake that you could do is doing interruptions. Sometimes in the heat of the things or in your competitiveness, you might get carried away by the discussion that you interrupt others while they are speaking. This is a big no-no, so try to avoid doing that. Try to be polite at all times and avoid vulgar language, rude comments, or sarcastic comments during the interview. Being intimidated. Avoid being intimidated like for example in a group discussion and two people are already going at it and having a discussion on what to do. Uh, and if you don't agree with it, don't be afraid to speak up and voice your opinion and also ask others what they think. Also avoid discussing social life, anything that is not related to the to the job interview to the job interview that is happening right now. Daydreaming. Sometimes when the interview is taking a long time, it might take the whole day, uh, hours and hours of waiting, you might see yourself losing interest, losing concentration, and you might stare out in the space or out in the window, look at your phone, look at your watch, and look uh, bored and look uninterested. So part of your job as the candidate is to keep your enthusiasm and interesting look at least in the surface even though if deep inside you are really 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 bored already try not to let that show. Loss of concentration. Try to stay alert at all times. Maintain eye contact and your body posture and look enthusiastic. Mobile phones. Avoid having your mobile phones on because this will only be a cause of distraction for you. You could tell your loved ones and friends that you will not be available for a certain amount of time because you're going on an, an important interview. They would understand and they would survive. Trust me. So better yet, switch off your mobile phones while you are in the interview process so you could concentrate at the task ahead. Criticizing others. Avoid criticizing others especially during your speech or during your answer because that is not for you to say, it's not your job, and it could only make you look like somebody who would cause problems in the organization later on. In summary, a group interview is very different from a one-on-one -on -one interview wherein it's just you and the recruiters, but the same principles apply. You have to prepare for this interview, arrive early, remain composed at all times, and display enthusiasm and interest for the company. So that's our lesson on group interview. On the next lesson, we will talk about how to tackle final interview questions. Hello and welcome to this lesson. On the previous lesson, we talked about group dynamics and how you could ace that group interview. 
On this lesson, let's talk about the final interview questions. So let's say that you have passed the group dynamic stage of the interview. Congratulations and welcome to the last and final interview. On the final interview, the recruiters will probably take about 30 minutes of their time to get to know you more deeply. So during this interview, they might ask you some of the other questions that we have discussed in the other lessons or they may also ask you open-ended questions. This way, they can assess your behavior as a person and how you are going to sell yourself to them. So this is a great opportunity for you. So these open-ended questions might be very tricky because sometimes when you try to tell a story about yourself, you might get lost in the details and you ended up not hitting your point. So there is a method called STAR method which is very effective for this type of questions and this is what I'm going to teach you today. So STAR method stands for S, situation or setting the scene, T, the task or the things that you need to accomplish or the problems that you need to overcome. A is the actions, the skills, the background, the behaviors and the characteristics that you have used yourself to overcome the problem. And result. Result is always has to be everything has been alright. Everything in the end, everything was okay. It's the outcome of what happened on your story. So an example of open-ended questions that they may ask you are have you led before? Other questions would be what is the biggest challenge that you have overcome in your life? Tell us the lowest point in your life. Let's take for example, I was asked the question, have you led before? So this is how I will answer it. Yes, I have led before. There was a time in our swimming team when I was still a junior athlete and our team captain was absent during a very important competition because of an allergy attack. So there was a problem that our team might be disqualified because there will be no team captain to stand in her place. So I volunteered to lead our team during that swimming meet. We have a meeting with the team. We use the divide and conquer technique. We then divided our workload so that all of us will be able to do the competition without overworking and at the same time without losing points for not having a player on each event of the competition. In the end, even though our team did not become the champion of the competition, we are very proud of ourselves for sticking it through and not getting disqualified and being able to handle the load, handle the workload equally among ourselves and everybody was happy even though we are just the third placer of that competition. Start with setting the scene or telling them about the situation and then giving them the task that you have to overcome and the actions that you have taken to overcome the problem and finally the results. It always has to be good results. Don't tell them a story of a bad result because there's just no point in the story and it doesn't highlight any skills or qualifications that you have related to the job. Can you imagine answering that question if you don't use the STAR method? What you will usually be doing is just answer the question with yes and yes. And somehow it will feel incomplete and you have missed an opportunity to show an important skill that you have related to the job. Try to avoid that. The next scenario is answering the question with no proper structure and then you will get lost. For example, have you led a team before? And you will answer, yes, I have led a team before. There was a time that I was leading a team for a swimming team. And also I was part of a, uh, what was that? I was part of this school council. So I was president of school council and I have led our uh, team, uh, our, our, our year, you know, our fourth years to create uh, fundraising, charity events, and things like that. Oh, there was also a time that I led during my previous work. I was assistant manager and then the manager was absent and I was being able to be assigned to be the manager. So this is what I call uh, word vomit. So if you don't structure your answer in an organized way, 
then you will just throw in ideas and ideas and ideas and then somehow you are making it worse the more you talk. So that's why it's very important to have a STAR method or a structure on how you answer final interview questions. So there you have it guys, that's how you answer final interview questions. This is also called the behavioral type of questions, open-ended questions, or final interview questions. You basically have to use this method to make sure that your story remains brief, intact, and most importantly, highlight your skills and capabilities as the candidate for this job.